Assalamu alaikum everybody and welcome back to another video where we factorize expressions with four terms by grouping. This video is going to be a practice video. So if you missed the last video, that's the video where we introduce the main concepts. Okay, so I encourage you to check it out. I can put the link to it in the description. All right, so let's start out with this example over here. Let's say we want to factorize this expression. Now the first thing we should try to see is if there is any factor that is in common between all the terms. And here I can immediately say no, because I don't see anything in common between 2 and b, or 2 and ab, right? And so I don't think I can pull out anything useful. And by the way, when I say common factor, I, I mean anything other than 1, all right? So I don't think I can pull out anything useful. This might indicate that we need to pair up some terms together that share a common factor and factorize those pairs separately and go from there. All right, so let's try to do that here. Let's highlight 2a. What can we pair with 2a? Or what other term in this expression shares a common factor with 2a? Well, 2 does, right? They both have 2, right? What about ab? Well, ab does as well, right? They both have a in them. What about b? Well, I don't see anything in common between 2a and b, so I'm not going to highlight b. Now, which one of those, which one of the terms 2 and ab should I pair with 2a? Well, as I said in the previous video, I want to get into the habit of pairing terms that share a common factor, meaning that whatever I pair with 2a over here, I want to make sure that my other group also shares a common factor. All right, so what if I pair 2a with 2? This leaves me with a, b, and b. Do they share a common factor? And the answer is yes. They both have b as a common factor. All right, so I like that pairing. So let's pair 2a with 2. That's my first group, which means that my second group will be a, b plus b. And notice here, if I paired 2a with a, b, the remaining terms will not have a common factor, right? The remaining terms will be 2 and b, and they don't have a common factor, okay? But in this particular example, it actually works. We can actually pair 2a with a, b, all right? It's just that in some examples, it doesn't work when we don't pair terms that share a common factor. So I just like to get into the habit of pairing terms that share a common factor in both groups. Okay, so here, and let's factorize both groups. So in this case, I can factorize a two, and what remains inside is a plus one, right? And then we have plus, here I can factorize a b. b times what gives me a b, just a, and b times what gives me b, just one. All right, that's it. Now we have two terms, both of which share a factor, right? They both have a plus one. Okay, and let's highlight what remains as well. What remains is 2 plus b. Okay, if we, so if we pull out the a plus 1, the green stuff is what, what's going to remain. All right, so a plus 1. And what remains is just 2 plus b. And I'm going to write the 2 plus b actually as b plus 2. The only reason why I'm going to do that is because I want to remain consistent, right? Because in the first expression, I put a variable first and then a number. So it's just, it, I don't know, it just looks better if I put a variable and then a number in the second expression as well. All right, so that's it, guys. So we factorized this expression. Now, could I have done it the other way? Well, yes, I could have, right? So I could have, uh, I could have factorized this by pairing 2a with ab. So 2a plus ab, okay? Even though my second group does not share a common factor. This, this works in many cases. I can do that, right? But in just some cases, it doesn't work. That's why I like to get in the habit of pairing terms that share a common factor, okay? So let's, let's try to factorize this really quickly. Here I can pull out an a. They both share an a. Now a times what gives me 2a, just 2. a times what gives me ab, just b. All right, plus, notice this, this is the same thing as 1 times 2 plus b. Okay, so notice that both terms now share the factor 2 plus b, and what remains is a plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to pull out the 2 plus b, 
and what remains inside is just a plus 1. Okay, and that's it. We have factorized this expression again. And it's the same answer that we got in the previous example. All right, just in a different order. All right, so I hope that made sense. The, the beauty of math is that you can do things in multiple ways. All right, you just have to experiment if it works or if it doesn't. Okay, so that's the point I wanted to get across. But in general, again, in general, I like to pair, I like to make sure that both groups that I create contain a common factor. They share a common factor. Or like the, the terms in both groups share a common factor. All right, so uh, let's get rid of that example now, and let's try one, or let's try two more examples, actually. All right, let's factorize x squared plus 3x minus 4x minus 12. All right, so uh, is there a common factor between all the terms? I don't see it because I don't see anything in common between x squared and negative 12. All right, so maybe we should group some terms together that share a common factor and factorize those groups separately. All right, so um, what can I pair with x squared? Is 3x a potential term that I could pair with x squared? Well, yes, right? They both have x in them, right? What about negative 4x? Well, yes, right? Both negative 4x and x squared share an x as a common factor. All right, and again, I can't pair x squared with negative 12 because there is no common factor between them. Okay, now which one of those, which one of 3x or negative 4x should I pair with x squared? Well, what happens if I pair it with 3x? I want to make sure that my, the remaining terms share a common factor, right? And my remaining terms here are negative 4x and negative 12. And they both share negative 4 as a common factor. So I like that pairing. All right, so let's do that. So x squared plus 3x. and negative 4x minus 12. All right, so that's my first group, and that's my second group over here. Now, let's factorize both groups. So in this group, I can pull out an x, which means that what remains inside is x plus 3. All right, and here I could pull out a negative 4. And negative 4 times what gives me negative 4x? Just x. And negative 4 times what gives me negative 12? Just positive 3. Right, and notice now we have two terms, both of which share the factor x plus 3. Right, and what remains after we pull out the x plus 3 is x minus 4. All right, so let's, let's factorize this. We have x plus 3. And what remains is just x minus 4. And we're done with factorizing this expression. All right, guys, so I hope that made sense. Uh, let's try one more example. Let's factorize mn, or m times n, plus 3p plus np plus 3m. Okay, and is there a common factor between all the terms? I don't see anything in common between mn and 3p, so I don't think so. Okay, so let's highlight mn here and let's see what can go with mn. What can I pair with mn? Well, again, 3p, we can't do that because they don't share a common factor. What about np? Well, yes, maybe. That's a potential term that we could pair with mn because they both have n, right? What about 3m? Well, 3m also, right? We could pair 3m with mn because they both have m. Now, which one of those should I pair with mn? Well, let's see if I pair mn with np. What does that leave me with? So mn plus np. So that's my first group, which means that my second group is 3p plus 3m. And I like that pairing because they both share a common factor. They both have 3 as a common factor. All right, so plus 3p plus 3m. That's my second group. All right, now let's factorize both groups. Here I could pull out an n. n times what gives me mn? Just m. 
and n times what gives me np? Just p. All right, so here we have plus, here we could pull out a 3, and 3 times what gives me 3p? Just p, and 3 times what gives me 3m? Just m, and we're done, All right? Um, the only thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to write uh, p plus m as m plus p because they're they're the exact same thing and I just wanted to make it look as look the same as this right so m plus p all right and now notice we have two terms that share m plus p as a factor so I can pull out the m plus p which means that what remains is n plus 3. And we're done, guys. That's it. All right? So the main uh, takeaway here is that when you have expressions with four terms that don't seem that, you know, the, the terms don't seem like they have any common factor that you could pull out, try to pair terms that share a common factor and then factorize those terms, factorize those groups separately and go from there. All right? And I just wanted you to know as well that if a pairing, if a certain pairing doesn't work, try to switch it up. Try to pair one term with another term and then see if that works. Okay? And basically experiment with this. You'll eventually get the hang of it with enough practice. And that's it, guys. I wish you the best. And um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you next time.